These are called haws. You can eat these. They have a seed in the middle of them. They say you uh, they actually can taste kind of like avocado. Not as nice though, but they're actually they're actually edible. How many people today know that? As they're driving by, with their cars full of frozen pizza. Our emerging mythos. What was the purpose of folklore and fairy tales? Well, in a pre-scientific age, when before we had CAT scans and MRIs and psychology. We still had issues such as uh, psychopaths and con artists and manipulators and pedophiles and proto-psychopaths and people still needed to pin these pathologies into the material world and because they had no scientific grounding which to do it they turned to the oldest science of all which is mythology. Now mythology and folklore is just it's just another kind of psychology really. It allows us to deal with both the shadow in our collective psyches and the shadows in our individual psyche. Not so much by projecting them onto something else but almost as a simulacra or a shadow of the shadow which allows us to come to terms with these concepts. You look at the children's fairy tales the times past Hansel and Gretel, Rapunzel, Rumpelstiltskin they were all to do with psychopaths they were a way of warning people that there was another kind of person who lived in this world who did not have the same intention and the same drives as the normal children who the stories would be told to. This was what remained of European folk wisdom tradition. Uh, following the, well it really ended with the, they completely wiped out the sort of European notion of native wisdom with the last slaughter of the Druids in Anglesey in Wales, I think it was in AD 61 by the Romans. Apart from that, there was only really the Laps up in Lapland in northern Scandinavia who retained the folk tradition in Europe. But they, but concepts live on. They live on in the linguistic spoken traditions. And where the, the greatest annihilation of the native wisdom took place in the Germanic countries is where the majority of these folk tales come from and they were just ways of pinning this supernatural concept into the real world to give an understanding on some level of why there was a predatory class among human beings. I'm walking through an Irish bog here. Uh, this was very important because previous to, thing like, previous to things like psychoanalysis it was not possible for people to to express their inner turmoil outside things like confession in the Catholic Church but when, after the Reformation there was no more that didn't exist for Protestants and interestingly enough same place where the where the uh, the folk tales, most of the four fairy tales come from, the Germanic countries, the birthplace of Lutherism. So that's what they are, but they haven't gone away. They're still with us. It's still expressed in modern culture. Uh, if you see things like Battlestar Galactica, you have the skin job Cylons. They're they're representative of psychopaths. The monster in the Alien movie. So it hasn't gone away. It's still with us. And it'll, it'll a couple of months back, or a month or so ago, I was on Aaron Franz Trans Resistor Radio uh, show, and it was a very interesting discussion. I was talking about this series of videos, and uh, Aaron has written a book and made a documentary. His film is called The Age of Transitions, which is excellent. I'm sure many of you have already seen it. 
his book Revolve about the the scientific rise to the Godhead shows that these fairy tales and these supernatural beliefs also exist among the scientific community although somebody's firing guns off here they also <laughs> I hope it's not pointing in this direction they also uh, it's pheasant hunting season in, in this part of Ireland they also uh, have their own spooky agenda in such in, in the same way that certain religions are waiting for their messiah the the scientific transhumanist community with a singularity what they're really waiting for is the machine messiah and like say orthodox jews who won't return to the israel until the messiah shows up some orthodox jews the same thing with the the transhumanists they have this notion too that mankind will not be completed until we've been relieved of our biological functions and have we're merged with the machine and these people in case you haven't already figured out are insane beyond belief there's nothing wrong with human beings it's part of our part of our magic our beauty our humanity is our flaws is our unhappiness this is why things like psychiatry are also part of transhumanism as well we are when we reach the depths of depression of poverty and many other things we're either destroyed or we react and we pull ourselves out of that to become even stronger and this is what drives evolution and I'm talking about the, the again you know me I'm, and when I say use the words evolution I'm talking about the full meaning of the word not just biological evolution about psychological or consciousness or evolution and so that's why I'm so vehemently against things like transhumanism psychiatry and things like the zeitgeist movement and the, and the Venus project because human beings need their faults and they need their 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 negatives in order to survive and flourish and move forward because the reaction to that that downturn when you've cried enough and when you've suffered enough is either to die or to become reborn you sort of become a messiah to yourself and that appears a lot in mythology as well that's what all those those stories about the labyrinth and that's why i use that motif in my book so that's why we have to get rid of the media and i'm not talking about going and down and attacking tv stations and burning them down i'm talking about just not complying just do not watch TV. No reason to watch. No excuse to watch TV anymore. You can get DVDs. You can get. See, the damage has really been done by the advertising and things like that. Uh, you can get. You watch YouTube, and you can. There's a vast archive of material that you don't have to see the latest shows with the latest ads to mess up your consciousness, to infect you with a, a, a consciousness parasite that's that's similar to, say, a lancet fluke, which enters the, which enters the the body of an ant it takes control of the ant uh, for its own agenda mainly reproduction and it takes control of the ants nervous system and that's what the that's what the psychopathic control grid is doing and in the past we had things like folklore to warn us of the prevailing class these things were passed on that's why they also killed all the women during the the witch trials and stuff like that they were there the psychopathic control grid is terrified of native wisdom that's also why they they've hunted down and killed as many people of color as possible because they're connected to the spirit far more than Europeans not because they're better it's just that we've been destroyed on so many levels but we're getting it back now and that's why like when people say to me oh well your books puzzling people it's not really an academic approach well yeah it's not an academic approach what it is it's a modern fairy tale uh, it's a modern fairy tale that's carrying this motif true in of the, the the sort of predatory class and the predatory being it's carrying it true into the modern age using the contemporary tools in which we have to work with those things and that's what that book is and that's actually what my art is and what my music is and everything I'm involved in uh, it's a I'm not saying it's a special thing it's just we all have a part to play and that's mine and mine is to 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 create the modern mythos, the modern fairy tale, to help bring something forward to the next generation. And that's the purpose of many of the people who would watch my channel and are 
sort of outside the mainstream media we are the vanguards of the the what's left of the european native wisdom tradition and it's our duty to pass this on to next generations because there's going to be a point where there'll be no memories they'll they'll wipe the memories clean and we must you know that's why we must rise to the challenge of these times so but not be negative about it this is actually a wonderful experience and it's a wonderful time i'm having the I'm having the greatest time of my life right now. I feel fantastic. My mind is fantastic. I'm working like 18 hours a day, and uh, I'm meeting so many amazing people. And because I, I'm no longer on the sort of the the Freudian shit heap that the rest of the West is. So uh, get off the Freudian shit shit heap. Uh, don't buy into the transhumanists, and uh, embrace the folklore and the mythology within your own life. And uh, You'll be amazed. Okay, a special treat on this Emerging Mythos video because I haven't made one in a long time. I've been so busy. But I'm going to show you a 6,000 year old megalithic structure that's just about 100 meters from my house. Well, about 200 meters from my house. Here, and here it is coming up through it now. This was built by people. 6,000 years ago, and it's in the closure. Here's the ditch. This is where the entrance was, and that's the center of the enclosure. On Midsummer's Eve, and I've done it, and I've tested it. It's my own theory, but I placed right in the center of this megalithic structure at the highest point I placed a stick and it lined up perfectly with the setting sun right there that gap in, in the, the mountains gap. on the sun on summer's eve midsummer's eve right there the sun sets and I place a stick here so here we are just think I'm knocking on the ground that people just like me and you the same dreams, the same consciousness built this thing here and they lived inside it. It's about it's about a hundred meters across, no it's less, it's about 50 meters across. It, uh, the ditch is here and it's built on a quite a tall hill, there's the valley down below. So there you go, our emerging mythos and this is why this is why we keep it alive. Look at this. Just on the intro to the uh, stone circle, all those fossils in this rock. Here's the, or not the stone circle, the henge, the earth henge. There it is, I'm in the middle of it here. We're about 20 miles from the sea. You have to wonder if the people who built this thing 6,000 years ago brought that deliberately over here for some reason. I like to think they did. My shoe's all covered in mud. Things you do for YouTube. So check out Aaron Franz Revolve until my next book comes out. And uh, my name of book again is Defeated Demons. Yeah, Defeated Demons. I see I'm so far into it I can't remember. Defeated Demons. You'll see the ad at the end anyway. And uh, Spring 2012. And I'll be making more videos.